So, um, would you be a supporter of the new popcorn movement? Well, I like the idea of being popular. Um, it'd be a nice change. Um, and some of the policies are clearly policies. What about being that conservative? Be that would be a nice change too. Well, if they're put in place and they're sustainable, that'd be fine. I don't know of any conservative who would not want to cut taxes, who would not want to grow the economy, would not want to uh, clamp down on some of, uh, to use the shorthand, woke stuff. But you've got to do it in a way that's credible. And uh, it's beyond irony when, uh, and beyond parody when somebody like Liz Truss uh, launches a movement like this, knowing how it ended, when, when she did the equivalent not of giving me my, my high-end sort of Apple phone for one birthday and a bike on the next and a PlayStation the year after that, but all my Christmases and birthdays at once. That's what she tried to do, and we know how it ended. It ended badly. And so the credibility of this movement is sadly sort of sunk right at the outset. And it's frustrating. You use the word faction. That's exactly the word. They are doing more damage by projecting a disunited, balkanized party than they can ever dream of achieving by coming up with policies that actually Rishi Sunak would happily implement, I'm sure, if the economy could handle it. Well, you say, but again, you would happily implement. But again, look, I understand, you know, the tax cuts, that's an issue. Look, when public services are in a dire uh, state and we've had mass inflation and dealing with post-lockdown policies, you know, I, I think, frankly, tax cuts, um, as much as, you know, none of us want to pay any more tax, are probably actually irresponsible at this time. And I know a lot of people disagree with me on that. And I'm not sure uh, the state spends our money very well, but, you know, I think, I think we are going to need more spent on schools and policing and things like that. But the idea that tackling woke issues... Uh, tackling issues, um, you know, like trans uh, ideology in our schools, lack of freedom of speech in our public spaces and indeed at universities, uh, tackling the immigration issue. The idea that those are impossible to, to actually forward, look, those not only are popular policies, they are, def they, are, they, are, they are needed, much needed policies. And Rishi Sunak, the trouble with Rishi Sunak, lovely man, very competent, very clever, blah, 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 talks a good game, says all the right things. But a lot of people feel like, I know you've only been in power a short period of time, but what are you going to actually do any of this stuff? I think what he would say is that he is trying to grow the economy. We have had a tax cut or a cut in national insurance, and that should be feeding uh, through. There's a, a big controversial strategy to handle small boats. And there's a great signed up member of the human race, James Cleverly, who is pursuing that policy. And if you, if you are the average man or woman in Britain and you think who is most likely to... To, to deliver on this for me, James Cleverly, for instance, or Jacob Rees-Mogg, which one of them do I relate to? Uh, who is most likely to be credible on some of these things uh, in economic terms? A prime minister who crashed the economy or Jeremy Hunt who, who, who started to turn it round, not to mention Jer Rishi Jeremy Sunak. Hunt, so that's sorry, the problem sorry, Gita. With it. Jeremy no, no. Hunt. Jeremy Hunt is a man who praised the Chinese for their zero COVID lockdown policy. Jeremy Hunt is an absolute would have been a disaster for this country if he'd been in charge of longer. I, I think he's a disaster for this country right now. He was just better than Quasi Quarteng as Chancellor. No one can get rid of him because he's seen as this safe pair of hands. We got I, he's got as many qualifications as I have to be Chancellor, which I think is rather worrying, by the way. Um, but here's the thing: you work for Boris Johnson. Would Boris Johnson? support the popcorn movement and i understand from a number of the people who are at this launch today we're going to be talking to uh, jake berry who's an mp at the launch and uh, he's got his he's got his mp hat on instead of his journalist hat on today uh, and and our, and our political commentator peter carwell but but i understand that boris johnson isn't there why isn't boris johnson in favor of popular conservatism boris johnson was a popular conservative i worked for him initially when he was mayor of London, when he won a, a left-leaning city yep. uh, and, and retook it against a very powerful opponent in Ken Livingston, retook that city mid-term mid, mid of a Conservative-led government, mid-recession and after an omni-shambles budget by George Osborne. That's what a popular Conservative looks like, somebody who can get the votes of more than a million people directly in London. We also know in 2019 that he got the one of the best victories for the Conservative Party in its formidable history, because he was offering genuinely charismatic, uh, inspiring leadership. Now, whatever you think of these people, and I've got a lot of respect for a lot of them individually, that's not what popular charismatic leadership looks like, I'm afraid. Um, and, and so all it does is distract from uh, the presentation of a united team, which is just a starting point. 
to having a fighting chance at the next general election. The trouble with Boris Johnson is actually he was pro net zero, one of the biggest economic disasters for this country, never tackled any of the woke issues, um, and actually very, very, very liberal on immigration, has talked about having, you know, a, uh, you know, a free for all, basically, anyone who's here illegally, uh, and just, well, you know, just get them all sign up and then we'll make sure we get taxes from them. I'm not sure, actually, when he talks openly about what his real views are, that he is in line with most Conservatives on a lot of these issues. We'll start with uh, one very, very clear example there. One of the first things I did beyond sort of handle, you know, the, 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 the carnage of, of Partygate that was, you know, exploded all over the place before I got there, was sit down and say, right, you are going to be asked at some point, what is a woman? How do you define a woman? And it should be obvious, but we had slipped so far that, uh, you know, a straightforward question like that, Keir Starmer, the previous person was explaining, couldn't answer that for a long, long time. He what still has Boris actually said when he was asked was, there is a biological reality to being female. Now, that didn't used to be controversial. It needed to be said. There was a follow-up question. Does that mean, does that apply to sport? Yes. Does that apply to prisons? Yes. Does that apply to hospitals? Yes. Okay. No, no, but saying, were, I'm sorry, Gito, right saying, well. saying it is all very well, saying it is all very well, but when you're in power, now whether it's whether it's been any of the prime ministers, the Tory prime ministers we've had in recent years, if, if you're not actually, you know, stopping boys from using girls' toilets in the loose, you're not actually stopping men from competing against women in women-only races, you're not actually, uh, uh, you know, stopping men being put in a women's hospital wards, etc., etc., if you're not actually doing anything to stop Stop it. Frankly, it counts for bugger all that these people are willing to say the right thing. And this is the problem a lot of people have, that the Tories now say the right thing. They talk a good game at party conference. Oh, we're going to tackle the boats. Oh, we're going to tackle woke madness. Oh, we're going to tackle high taxes. They put taxes up. They don't do anything about immigration. And they allow our kids to be the victims of political ideology from trans organisations. They don't actually do any of the things they say they care about. That's that's what would be popular, doing something. I think there are two tragedies uh, that, that uh, if you indulge me just briefly, that, that, that changed what Boris Johnson was able to achieve. One is that after the Brexit referendum, he should have been prime minister then. We lost three years under Theresa May yeah. that would have been fundamentally different if Michael Gove had not sort of shafted Boris, frankly, and deprived us of the kind of leadership that most of the country had just voted for. Then when Boris eventually does get in, what happens? Global pandemic. One of the most libertarian or liberal-minded, in a good way, conservatives, one of the most enthusiastic about sort of uh, aspirate, uh, you know, taking Britain to a higher ground, was forced to lock down the economy, he wasn't pretty forced. much forced by the consensus. He wasn't forced, he chose forced to do it. to do all kinds of things he didn't like. No, and by did. the time that was Because over, he doesn't he actually have any principles at all. Here's the thing. Come back to this trust really briefly. Do you think this popcorn movement is going to have any influence in, in the Conservative circles? Will, it, will being all a part it of it does... save any of these MPs' seats? All it does is provide further ammunition for the, a very, very mediocre and disappointing Labour Party to say, you know, you don't have to like us, but this shower cannot even agree amongst themselves how to run a proverbial piss up in a brewery. <laughs> and that is enough, sadly. I, so uh, I, like, I think I should apologise for all of our language in this, but we feel strongly. Geeta Harry, always good to talk to you, former dad.